you by Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sathi in association with LI Sinapal Jeevan Sathi Rahane Chhasa Jeevan Pascha Maya ko vastavikta tabat haun sa jabat dukha pare ko bela ma kune ek bhakti le hamila Maya ko saath tinsan Maya ko abas tinsan Namaste ani swagat se yaar Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sathi ma ro mahumal vika subha ra aza hamile is to ek jodi la nimti ayeka chhu jisko Maya dukha ko bela ma first ayo ra palayo. 2005 साल में नेपाल छिर्नु भए कि एक जना अमेरिकन नागरिकले 18 वर्ष को उम्र में यहाँ को दुख र बच्चा और लाए रामरो शिक्षा दिने मनसाय का साथ कोपिला वैली स्कूल को संचालन शुरू करनु भायो 50 साना विद्यार्थी और बड़े शुरू करनु भाई को 50 साना बाल बाली का बड़े शुरू करनु भाई को और ये तो � तो इसे क्रम में वहाँ को आपने छोरा लाइव वहाँ लिपने घुमाऊं नू पड़ेगा थियो। तो तेज दुखा को बिलाम है वहाँ ले आपने जीवन साथी जेरेमी पावर जिम बॉल लाइ भेट नू भायो अमेरिका में। तो तेज सिरी ने तेज दुखा को बिलाम है जेरेमी को माया का साथ वहाँ को जीवन अगाड़ी बढ़ियो र अहिले वहाँ को Namaste. 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 How are you? Thank you for coming to the show. Thanks, Thanks for having seat. us. Thank you. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show, both of you. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much for making time. Thanks for having us. Maggie, let's talk a little Nepal. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 The most amazing journey for you mm. as well, right? Definitely. And when you started out with Kopila Valley, it must have been like one of the life-changing events for you, right? You were about uh, 18 years old when you left America and you started on a backpacking trip. And then probably 23 when you started Kopila Valley, is that right? That's right. Yeah. yeah really young. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find Nepal at that time? I mean, it was so different than anything I'd ever experienced. I felt like if I had chosen the most opposite place on earth than suburban New Jersey and New York where I grew up, it would have been someplace like here. And, you know, my first entry to Nepal was through the Midwestern region. Like, I hadn't been to Pokhara or Kathmandu or seen the more urban community. So I started in rural Nepal and it was you know, shell-shocking and different, and it also really captured my heart. It stole my heart from, from the day I crossed over the border at Nepal Ganj. I felt like this place was special and had something to teach me and to offer me, and it has. It's taken over my life's course completely. <laughs> you co-founded Kopila Valley. That's right. I believe you started with 50 children? Yeah, so actually it started really, really small with the concept that children needed their basic needs met. This was in 05, 06, as the Civil War was coming to a close, very affected um, in the Karnali region where my co-founder and I started our work. And um, the idea was just do what we can to help a small population of children in need. And there were children breaking rocks by the side of a riverbed. And there was this one little girl, her name was Hima. And she looked up at me and said, Namaste, Didi, with this big smile. And I thought right then and there, I wanted to do something. And my co-founder, Tope Bhadarmala, was an orphan himself. And he knew what hardship was. He knew what it was like to grow up without food and to be cold in the winter and have to go to India to work when he was 12. And we just decided that we had to do something. And uh, we didn't know that we'd <laughs> end up committing our lives and, and building this organization, but it's, it's taken over and it's been the best. <laughs> um, I know for a fact, I can speak for all the Nepali people, that you have been amazing. Mm -hmm. And especially also for the people in Surkit, where your work lies and where your home lies, your second home or first home mm -hmm. lies. Uh, we're all very proud of you and we're honored that you've chosen to do this in our country. And of course, the CNN Hero of the Year Award was another biggest thing for Nepal and 
We're really very proud of you. Nepal ko chori banana ne chaan so ami magi like. Kine bani wale jun tarika ko kam garnu boy ko cha. Ek tome ramro garnu boy ko cha. Shayad hami afeli pori even for us it would have been difficult for us to even imagine to the same. So over the years, um, you started with the Kopila Valley Women's Center as well, mm -hmm. the Kopila Valley Health Clinic, and now you're working on the Kopila Valley Campus, which was inaugurated just a. Uh, few days or few weeks ago, right? Correct, yeah. And now you have about what? Uh, in the school itself, there is about what, 400 students? Correct, yeah. 400 We've students. got 400 kids and now another 50 kids who have graduated and are off at college and going to university and doing programs around the world. So, so the Kopilo Valley School operates free of cost? Correct, yeah. Wow. So it's for children who are orphans or incredibly vulnerable, children who don't have their basic needs met, children who are unable to cross that barrier and get into school. And we find those children, we have hundreds of kids who come and apply. Actually, it's admission season right now. And we choose the most needful and we give them a full lifetime scholarship with absolutely everything they need to become the next generation of teachers and government officials and change makers who will help rebuild this country and build this country. So Jeremy, I believe this is like, even for both of you, this is the first time that you are on camera in front of a TV <laughs> uh, giving an interview as a couple. Uh, we haven't forgotten you. <laughs> That's okay. Jeremy is a filmmaker. Uh, you've done documentaries. In your 20s, you started The Lab magazine. You've also done a fil feature film which I was going through your bio and then I was like, oh, he's done a feature film with Selma Blair as well. <laughs> and then you've also made a documentary together, Love Letters for My Children with Maggie. You're also working on documentaries at the moment. Yeah. How has filmmaking changed to your life? Oh. Um, <laughs> Very serious question. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's weird. I think I've, it's something I've done since I can, as far as I can remember, so I don't know if it's changed my life, but like a big thing that did is I probably would have never met Maggie because we kind of met through, it's hard to tell what started first, the relationship or the documentary, but <laughs> if it wasn't for filmmaking, I probably would have never met Maggie because it was a good friend of ours that introduced us through filmmaking, so yeah. <laughs> Keeping that in mind, let's go back to the time the two of you met. So the first time you met was in 2015. Correct. Yeah. So we, um, I was speaking at a conference called the Do Lectures. I was giving a talk and Jeremy was there attending as well. It's this amazing conference that happens in California and you sleep in teepees and there's really good talks and I was speaking and um, yeah, we just met and connected and just as friends, there was nothing romantic, no big sparks. I think we were both, you know, just fascinated by each other. And then um, it was time to leave. I had to leave and fly back to Nepal and I was going to be gone for gosh knows how long. And Jeremy asked for my number. <laughs> and um, we, we sort of, I was in Nepal and things were busy. CNN Heroes was happening. I have all the kids. I work all the time. And every now and again, we'd send a message back and forth. But it was nothing big or dramatic. and. And until She's very hard to keep in touch with. Yeah, here. because <laughs> well, usually, we should, usually you would date like a single person, or even if the person was um, a single mom, probably they would have like two kids, three kids. Yeah. <laughs> she had like 400, almost 400, or starting with 50. That's yeah. a lot to keep up with. Yeah. What fascinated you about Maggie when you met her initially? Oh, everything. Well, the first time I met her which she told like her whole story which is blew my mind so immediately I wanted to like help come over help tell their story and be involved any way I could but I think the first time I came to the home is when I knew just like how special Maggie was and what she was doing and just meeting all the kids and I don't know she's yeah she's incredible <laughs> I can yeah. feel the love. <laughs> I think for me, I was working and I grew up in Nepal and I was just so headstrong and focused on the organization and my work and the kids and I, I couldn't envision my life with a partner. You know, it was just, how is that going to happen? How would that person fit into the puzzle and want to move to Nepal or move to Sirkat and there wasn't a dating life where I was. And 
<laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> And so I had never envisioned my life with someone and or someone who could fit into the life there. And so it really, we got really lucky yeah. at meeting and just combining our lives together because how would it ever work? Like living in LA and living in rural Nepal, it just, it didn't seem to me that it was in the cards. And by some miracle we met and we connected and it was just a true love story through and through. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> what fascinated you about Jeremy? Yeah. He, I think Jeremy just felt like a tree. Like he was a tree, a tree. Like he's so sturdy and so strong and confident and sure of himself. And though not on camera all the time, but, <laughs> but I think, I don't know. They say that love is like you know people don't believe in the spiritual side of things but I felt the initial like when I saw him again after meeting him initially I was like wow like it was a full-blown like I was in love with him just there's no way to describe it I just felt this instant connection like who is this person I have to know them and there's mixed opinions on whether that can happen but to me I just knew right away like almost almost instinctively that this is the person that I want to be with. Like, I think it was on the first couple of dates that I just felt like I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. It was so fast. Wow. Yep. I wouldn't recommend it, like <laughs> meeting someone and just completely falling in love. <laughs> but it's true, like, it, I just felt like I have to know this person. I want to be with them. I love him. And, and it's so true, like, everything about us is compatible and we get along and we're best friends and I was so nervous when he first came to Sirket. I was like, what if he hates Nepal? Like, what if he can't live in rural, this rural area where life is hard and different, so different than the US and, but sure enough, he came and just fit into the picture. Like, it was like he'd always been there and the kids wow. loved him and. That, well, you were lucky that yeah. it actually happened that way. Yeah, all, all of my friends were like, what's your dating profile going to look like? You're never going to meet anyone. Like, no one's going to come out there. Like, it wasn't, it didn't seem like it could have ever happened. And yet it did, so. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your stories with us. With that, we'd like to take our first break right here on Jeevan Sathi. As I'm Jeevan Sathi, my special guest like Nim Tayaka Chong, CNN Hero of the Year Award ka Vijita Hununcha. As I'm Sang, recipient Pano, Maggie Doyen Hununcha. And with that, I'm Jeevan Sathi, filmmaker Jeremy Power Rajim Balpani Hununcha. Kata hi na zanu hola, only on Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sathi. We'll be right back. Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sathi. In association with LI Sinapal Jeevan Sathi. Rahane Chassa Jeevan Pascha. Puno swagat sa LI Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sathi ma. Aza hami sanga nikhe ne special guest ununsa. Maggie Doyen ununsa. Rawa ako Jeevan Sathi. Jeremy pani aza hamro saath ma ununsa. So we were talking about how you met, how you fell in love. If I like sit, sitting back here, it sounds like such a fairy tale story. But I was watching um, the documentary um, Love Letters for My Children. The mm. Love Letters for My Children is the only thing that I can say. I can't hear it. 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 But Kulagi, when you were nominated, I've been following your story, I've been following on Instagram, I asked a lot of people to vote for you as well, and I was, every day I was going on their page and voting for you every single day, and it was such a happy uh, moment for us, and there are certain stories uh, on your Instagram page uh, which I have cried, and it, it, it has given me goosebumps as well. So, it, I know it's very personal talking about um, that issue, but there was a child uh, named Ravi, uh, whom, who was a son for you. Mm -hmm. And you had him from when he was a very small age. But I am unaware about the story as to how he came into your life. Yeah, so Ravi was one of, we have you know 50 children in our home and he was a severely malnourished child. He was an orphan and I was so, so in love with him. And, went through a long sort of medical journey with him and um, and yeah like all of my children I was very very bonded and and uh, we lost Ravi in a in a terrible accident and um, 
you know, I thought after that happened, it was losing my child and it was, it was horrific, it was terrible. It was, um, you know, I didn't think I'd ever stand or walk or be able to live again. And um, yeah, so we, um, I went back to the States, I went back to the town I grew up in, I needed some time to heal and recover and uh, it was, you know, just a very, very dark time in my life. And um, after a couple of, of weeks of just not being able to move, eventually my friend said, you know, come out, come to California, you have to get out, you have to get into the sun and CNN Heroes was doing this amazing training also in LA as part of the whole curriculum. and. And so actually, it was my first night um, that I was out. I had to go to LA for CNN Heroes, and that was the day that we met up again. And um, there is this line that you said, you <clears throat> mentioned there, I felt like I would never be able to love again. Mm -hmm. And then you fell in love. Yeah. So do you think that what you went through sort of connected you to Jeremy in some ways? Yeah, I think at a time when I was really questioning my faith and just life in general and angry. I was angry and I was bitter and I was resentful and I, you know, I just didn't know how to go on. To, to, to meet him right after that showed some form of, of just validation, like it's okay, I'm going to be okay, I'm, I'm not going to get through this but I can feel love and I can feel joy again and I can go back to Nepal and raise my family and be with my children and, and it's never gonna be okay, but I'm, go I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna do my work and I'm gonna help even more children as a result. So we did, we've slowly been working through it as a family and yeah, and yeah there has been joy and laughter and all good things again. How did you feel, Jeremy, like, because when you initially met the Maggie that you met initially, a year back, and the Maggie that you met a year later, who lost someone whom she loved with a dear life, who lost a son in her life, how was it meeting her at that point in time? Well, we, the first time we met was before that, so I'd already had a weekend with her, but it was, it was, it was just really hard, like, I, just to see her go through that was it was so hard and it's like I've I've never been close to anyone going through something like that so I didn't have any experience with that so it wasn't like oh I know what to do this is what we do so it's like all I could really do was just be there with her and listen and the like the film kind of started out of that it was kind of an idea that we were just going to do this road trip together and it was going to be a therapeutic thing we filmed conversations and interviews and as we were driving and I don't know I think maybe I leaned towards filmmaking and listening because that's all I really knew how to do at the time but yeah it's been you know it'll never be the same for her but I think it's been quite the pretty powerful to watch her go through all that and then still put you know not put on a face but in some ways put on a face to keep the kids all happy while you're going through all that, it's, it's pretty, it's a lot. <laughs> and when you came to Nepal with her, when you went to Sirket, when you met all the children, when you see, when you saw how the kind of life that she was living, the kind of life, you know, work that she was doing, how did that make you feel? Uh, I was like, I think I was at a point in my life, like I had been working in advertising and I worked with big brands and like one of the last things I did before because I quit commercials and that was like I was like this makeup project I won't say what it was but <laughs> one of some of the final conversations before like deciding to kind of like leave that life behind and focus on being over here was like a ridiculous conversation about like how many seconds the logo was going to be in there and I, so I think I was like really looking for a big change, yeah. so something fresh. It didn't and scare me. If anything, yeah. it ex excited me and attracted to her. You know, like I don't know what I think. What you're doing is very. I don't know. Everyone wishes that they, at a young age, would have like done that thing that they really believed in. So it's inspiring and it was just exciting to be around. And yeah, we were just we were really lucky that it worked out. That I was able to you know get funding for a film and allow me to be over there and 
feel like I was being a part of it and helping rather than just, you know, being there. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> this makes me question, what do you guys fight about? <laughs> Now we're getting into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> When do you fight? What do you fight about? I don't know. I, we, I, we don't really fight about big, serious things. I think it's usually like Maggie hates like logistics and scheduling, and I love that kind of stuff. So it's silly things like that. Like I'll always be like, at the worst possible time, bring up like, so what's the schedule for next month? And, and I think that. Yeah, yeah, he's a enjoy. planner and I'm more spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> and those two kind of collide sort of yeah. yeah. I also think, I mean, we had a baby last year. Yeah. And, and that's when you're sleep deprived yeah. and all of the things that go along with the baby and diapers and navigating travel. And we were a really good team during a lot of those things. I think it's brought us together for the better. But people say sometimes you fight after you have a baby because you're you know, you're just sleep derived, but we've been okay. Yeah. Every right, now a, and again. We have a very good baby, luckily, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, we have some photos of you. So, Maggie has made you our Nepali joint. <laughs> Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> <laughs> she is Nepal ko chori, which means uh, Nepal's daughter. So now you've become Nepal's joint, which means Nepal's um, son in law. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> because the photo, you got married in a very Nepali. Uh, ritual as well, right? We so how, how did you plan that? How did you think about that? So we wanted to throw the kids the biggest party of their lives yeah. and you know we never get invited to Nepali weddings. We're a family of 50 and and you know we just we don't get to do it so we thought let's show the kids you know in respect to their culture because Nepali weddings are beautiful like the union and the spiritual ceremony of it and we're both not particularly religious, so we thought this is a really good way to bring, you know, spirituality and wedding ceremony into it. So we love nature. We bust the kids to the top of the mountain in Pokhara, and we wanted to see the Himalayas. And we did, we chose a few Nepali ceremonies and did the traditional walk down the aisle as well. And then just threw them an epic, beautiful Nepali wedding and party with all of their favorite foods and soda and drinks. And it was amazing. Yeah, it was really for the kids. Because our family, like a couple of family members came like from back in the States and Canada. But it was really just an epic party for the kids. Kid they, like, they like, we want a swimming pool. We want chicken <laughs> chili. And we're like, all right. <laughs> we just gave them everything that they'd ever want. Ice cream. They got to all choose their own outfit. The boys were all in Dota suit all, and the girls were wearing these beautiful Lenga choli and jewelry, and we all got made up and had the party of our lives. So how did the conversation of marriage happen? Like, did you propose or, or do you do the, yeah, think, did you do the Nepali way? Do you want to get married? It's time to get married. <laughs> Let's get married, you know? No, I think the we parents had, did not sit together, no. No, no. we had like, <laughs> I think we had just talked about it, but, uh, and. I think Maggie knew it was coming, it wasn't a surprise, but I proposed and we were, when we were on another road trip. Everything seems to happen on Here road trips. Here or uh, in America? Back in, the States, in America. Yeah. We were in Oregon on the coast there, which is like the first, the first road trip and first date we had was a big road trip. So we went on the same road trip and then one of the places along there. And then it was really sweet beforehand. <laughs> he asked the kids permission Aww. and he sat, he sat them all in a room. And you had no idea. I had no idea. And he sat them all in a room. We do satsang every night, and it was the satsang room. And he said, I think he was really nervous. And he was like, I think. There's a lot of kids to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to, if you're okay with it, I'm going to ask your mom if she wants to marry me. And I was downstairs in a meeting in the office, and I heard the whole house just shake like, ah! and like the kids started screaming and cheering, but then they couldn't tell me. So what they did they say when you asked what's the commotion about? They were just like, nothing, you know, <laughs> it's really sweet. I'm sure that gave away a lot of things. <laughs> I think my, one, of the, one of the girls said, Jeremy's going to break up with you and just walked away. And like, <laughs> she just got all awkward and I'm like, what are you doing? On it. So we asked the kids permission, which was really, I think, tells you the kind of guy that Jeremy is, like just involving them in the process so that they felt a part of it. And I think you were also worried that it would feel like he was taking me away from yeah. them. And instead we wanted to bring them into it and, and have them be a part of this journey as a family. So 
the wedding was very much in that light of just, it's a family, we're becoming a family, all of us together, and it was so much fun. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the second photo. So this is the holy photo with you and Ruby. How is it uh, celebrating uh, the festivals in Nepal? How much of the culture have you been able to, you know, uh, celebrate or be a part of? All of it. We celebrate every holiday, Desai, Deepawali, Holi is our absolute favorite. As you can see in the photo, it's just who, who else wouldn't want to have a festival about love and throwing color and water on each other? It's the best, I say Me. it's the best yeah. holiday in the world. Me, I'm not a fan of Holi. No! <laughs> not a fan of Holi. You have to come celebrate at our house. It's all yeah. fun. only on Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sati. As a special guest, Maggie Doy, Rwahako Jeevan Sati, Jeremy Lanim Tiaikato. Rwahako story, first time Kune National Television, Maggie Harley here in the National yeah, International Television may have the Ununta. We'll be right back. Brought to you by Nestle Everyday Jivan Sati in association with LI Cinepal Jivan Sati Rahane Chasa Jivan Pascha. Puna Swagat Sayala Nestle Everyday Jivan Sati Ma. So Maggie and Jeremy, it's now time for the section where we'll sh be showing you videos of few people who know you very well. Jun bela wa poila aunu boyo like mala story bata ali ban sunau san kya? Kaar ma pani the na ami chay ni bul bule ma chay ni sunny bar unaru luga do na dekhi le ra nuau na dekhi le ra kaar bada 20 minute thin ni baato san kya? Tya chay ni sam sam na nani aru 50 sam na nani aru le ra kaar ma pani na aku kaar le garda hai tiu undai sporsu ko manse le tis tu. In terms of fun, Maggie's highs are really high and her lows are pretty low, whereas Jeremy kind of rides smoothly and just generally has fewer swings. I don't know if romantic, Jeremy likes it. Sorry, Maggie. Uh, because I remember like he used to come to my room to ask for like something to light candles like matches or lighter. I mean Malachan eh was the romantic man said it's a tak combined bati balera to you onumna ramru to essence or combined bati balti tagi in the room ma and this was he cost the mazali kura tewada Jeremy Zen Ali body romantic like someone. I would say they're genuine. You always know what they're thinking. They're sharp. You can't get anything by them, and they're joyful. Pardis, <laughs> So you're the fun one and he's the <laughs> romantic one. Definitely. Because uh, when I, I look at the videos and the photos that you put up on Instagram, sometimes the, you know, I, I remember there was this one video where you did it, it like with one go. You were shooting in one go, and then all the kids were, were dancing, and some of them were washing dishes, some of them were cooking and everything. So it seems like a very fun place to be at. Mm. It's filled with joy and laughter. There's always music playing, and it's the best place on earth. It's my favorite place on earth. So tell us about how the Kupila Valley campus is progressing so far. It's, um, I think it's the coolest school in the world. It's Nepal's greenest school. So it requires zero energy from the outside. There's even a solar cooker that generates the gas that cooks the food and biogas and solar 
uh, panels for every room and the fan. And then there's a 300,000 liter rainwater harvest tank. It's rammed earth technology built by some of the best minds and Nepali engineers and architects around. And um, it's been five years in the making. I think it's, um, it's taken a lot of work. The earthquake happened right in the midst of it all, so that made us go back to the drawing boards even more structurally. Uh, and it's just a dream come true. I love it. And uh, I hope that it's a model and something that we can take to scale and continue to educate more of Nepal's children. Okay. Jeremy, um, through all the years that you've known Maggie now, <laughs> and being married to her and having a child with her, what have you learned from Maggie? Oh, what have I learned? So much. Um, I think like one of the biggest things I admire about Maggie is I'm like, I'm kind of like afraid and paranoid of things going wrong and she's like, we've been in some crazy situations together where someone's really sick and like there may be their last day alive and she's so good at just being like if I was that person what would I want right now where it could be easy to be like afraid to be like I don't know what to do she's like she'll be the first one that jumps right into a situation and is like right there with that person and holding them and I don't know I think I've always admired that that no matter who it is or no matter where we are in the world you're so she's just so compassionate about other people and She's always thinking, if I was in this situation, what would I want people to treat me like? So. What have you learned, Maggie, <laughs> um, from Jeremy? I've learned to plan. <laughs> Having a plan is good. <laughs> um, she finally admits, or has she admitted already? She admits that all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. A usually after, though. Oh, after. And um, I think at the end of a long work day, he'll just take my phone and take the computer and shut it down and just be like, we have to be in this moment. And he brings me to the present moment and reminds me that like, we don't know how long we're going to be here. We have to love one another and be with our family and, and be present and make every day count make every day count. He'll always be the one that's like, let's go on this trip or let's go do something or let's take the kids here. And yeah, it can't all just be work, work, work and um, struggle. There has to be enjoyment and, you know, being present and happy together. So I think he brings that to my life. <laughs> uh, your daughter is growing up in Nepal. She's growing up with the children. She's about uh, 15 months old now. Um, Will you be bringing her up in the days to, or the years to come here itself? And oh yeah, she speaks better Nepali than both of us. <laughs> today what she, about, today what she, about the school, schooling <laughs> part? Have you thought of it? Um, well, we, the reason why um, we want to have the best school in all of Nepal is so that our children and Ruby, our biological daughter, can go there and have the best education. And that's kind of the idea of the school, it's like, where would you want your kids to go to school? Let's build that for all of Nepal's children. Every single child, no matter who they are, where they're born, who their parents are, where they come from, whether they're a street child begging on the road or a kid up in Humla in the most rural area should have access to the best education. And that is what this school is about. Um, so our dream is for Ruby to be able to go there and, and be educated along with our other children. And, uh, and that's a big motivator in why we do the work that we do, so that our kids have a wonderful life and so that all of Nepal's children are cared for and kept safe and nurtured and educated and loved. And, and that's why we want to be in this country. And there's still more children out there who need all of our help. Um, so thank you for the platform to share that. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Blinknow.org is our website. Sir. You can go to the page as well as donate for the lovely work that Maggie is doing. We'll take another break before we move on to the last segment where we'll be playing games.
So <laughs> we've had conversations. I don't know the, uh, if you've watched the show or not. So the last segment is all about games, and we'll be asking you a few rapid fire questions about the two of you. So please be ready for that. Kathina Zanahola, Hami Chitte Ne Forkinto, only on Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sati. Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sati in association with LI Senepal Jeevan Sati Rahane Chassa Jeevan Pascha Puna swagat se yaan lai Nestle Everyday Jeevan Sati ma So Jeremy and Maggie, we have a game for you So this is like a competition Will the two of you will be playing the games separately Just before that Separately, this is... So I have something here It's dangerous could change the rest Very of the dangerous. week if I answer all these. Okay, let me just, yeah. So I'll be blindfolding the two of you, one by one. <laughs> and there will be various objects in front of you. You'll have to, of course, touch them and tell us what is what. Okay. okay. So I'll start with you first. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I'm blindfolding Maggie Joy. <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture. Please Can don't kill me. This my phone. Please don't kill me. I have to practice. Hold on. Okay, I'm good. So I'll do this. Okay, here's your first. A juice box. Oh, yay! And it's probably Nestle because they're the sponsor. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Milo. No, you are absolutely correct, huh? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but it's coffee. The coffee beater, the kisara, the coffee taka. No, 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 wait. Okay, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought I won. No. Here's another one. Oh, this is a ping pong ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> That's because my kids love ping pong. Oh, here's the next one. <laughs> I feel like she can see from. Um, Underneath. It's it. a yeah. highlighter. Or a pen? Yeah, it's a highlighter. Yes! <laughs> Okay. She's not Here's competitive at all. Last one. This is hard, but it goes around my wrist. Could be a tape measure. Oh, What's wait. the final answer? It sounds like a timekeeper. Stopwatch. <laughs> Yay! Wow. <laughs> wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. Woo! So should I? Yeah. Let me try. That was impressive. Jeremy, try beating that. No way. <laughs> well, it's impossible because you got everyone right. So. <laughs> no, it's the it's time. The They're only tie. <laughs> oh, it's time. I'll be judging according to how quickly you. <laughs> okay. Do I get to do the same item? No, definitely <laughs> not. We have another bowl right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's your first one. Marker. Correct. Nice job. Here's the second one. Mouse for a computer. Yes. Woo! Here's the third one. Uh, electric, electrician's tape. Correct. Here's the fourth one. Batteries. Woo! Wow! A team. Oh, he can't see oh, yeah. you. <laughs> Are you trying to high five me? Yeah. Did you miss it here? Oh, yeah. That we was got the this. lamest time ever. Would you please be sweet and like untie, untie him? <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe I went to give you a high five. But I think time-wise, he was faster. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, he, he was. was faster, right? You were faster. So we have a gift tamper for you, Jeremy, from this Wow. Night. You can take this back Thank to you. Sir Kip. Nice. Thank you. Wow. This is so funny. Okay, now it's question it answer here, time. It doesn't matter. Anywhere is fine. So I'll be asking um, questions about the two of you, two two of you. So I'll be asking questions about Jeremy to you, and I'll be asking questions about Maggie to you. So this is, if it's correct, you show this. If it's incorrect, you <laughs> show this. Angry face. Okay. Yeah, angry face. You'll have to show it towards the camera. Since you won, uh, you'll be, I'll be asking the questions to you. You'll be oh, God. showing the emojis. It's my, my reward, does I have to go first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here it goes. Who is the most influential person in Maggie's life? Oh. Me. 
Dalai Lama. What's the correct answer? Definitely Topji, my co-founder who Aww. started Copilo with me. <laughs> You're close though. You're up there. <laughs> Second place with 0.5. <laughs> okay. There's a lot though. I have many influential people. What is a favorite series or sitcom that she loves to watch at times? Favorite series, uh, Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. <laughs> but it's freaky. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I can't watch it. Um, America or Nepal? Her choice. For Maggie? Yeah. Nepal. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have asked this question. <laughs> Her favorite food? Favorite food. You have to be quick, 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 quick. Dalbot. Dalbot power 24 hour! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Maggie, you don't have to worry about it. 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 Do you know how to cook the whole dal, bhat, or curry outside? Yeah, but not very well. Not very well. Not very well. Not very well. Okay. I need to improve in that area. <laughs> not a good cook. Okay, uh, the last question. What has been the most challenging moment for her since she co-founded uh, Kopila Valley? The most challenging? <laughs> wow. Uh, I, as hard as it is to say, probably the loss of Robbie. Mm, yeah, that is true. Okay, so you get <coughs> four on five. So we pass on no, the I emoji to him. I have to beat that, huh? No, I'm in control right. of whether it's I'm right ready, or and I'm gonna be fast. I'm gonna be quick. Okay. All right, here is a question, Maggie. Favorite filmmaker, Jeremy's favorite filmmaker? <laughs> Mark Duplass. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be honest about it, okay? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So if you guys had a boy, what would have Jeremy named him? Echo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Echo. I would have I given. I would have, have almost made anything right, but that. Was like, <laughs> what would he? Have, what would you have named if you had guys had a boy? Definitely not that. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid to say. Put us on the steel. We were we were trying to come up with like Nepali names that also fit in America. That's why we, we chose Ruby. About yeah. River. Or River Griff. Griffin. Yeah. I don't know. We were just. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know River. Why I, said. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, his favorite gadget. Laptop. Lap? No, you have to come on. <laughs> no. Oh, you've lost it already. Oh, oh dear. I don't What's know. What's gadget? Uh, camera? Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. I was just thinking about you editing all the time. It's yeah. true. I, do, I can... do like laptops, but sorry. Yeah. You only take so much and then you edit a lot. <laughs> I should have known. Sorry. Okay. His uh, most memorable moment with you? Birthing Ruby Sunshine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His Giving favorite bird. food. Tacos. Yay. <laughs> so Jeremy, you won again. Congratulations. I'm a loser. I'm sorry it's the same gift back <laughs> Even though it's from Nestle every day. You're lucky, I'm sure I'll, you would like to share it I'll with Maggie. Uh, I'll let you borrow you can, some. The kids can share. That's right. <laughs> sorry. So we've come Go to the end of the like show. Thank mood. you so much. We had so much fun. We also got to see some of the personal aspects of your life. Thank you so much for sharing with us for the first time on any national television. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Thank Thank you so you. much. Before we go, I'd like to take a photo with you. Oh yeah, we love that. Every day, Jeevan Sati. In association with LI Cinepal Jeevan Sati, Rohanicha Sa Jeevan Pascha.